Good morning. We are headed to the Grand Palace to get our first grab ride. In the, the cock of bang. Grab is like the Uber of Thailand. Um, there's no Uber here, but um, it's pretty simple. Just a regular app. Um, you just put in your information. It wouldn't take my credit card, so we have to go cash. Um, but it's about a 45 minute ride to uh, the Grand Palace. There's six pairs of these demon guardians, and they all face the temple of the Emerald Buddha, which is which is over here, and they're put there to ward off evil spirits. Interesting. The Emerald Buddha is the Buddha image, which was carved from a block of jasper. Judging from the image's style, the Emerald Buddha is of northern Thai workmanship and probably made in the 15th century. And it's regarded as the most important Buddha image in Thailand. There's a ceremony of changing the costumes of the Emerald Buddha. And it happens three times a year at the beginning of the season. And it's done by the king. And each costume represents one of the three seasons in Thai culture. So there's summer, the rainy season, and winter. Around the Emerald Buddha, there's this mural that's 178 panels. And it depicts a battle between Tsaksakhan, who is the king of the demons, and King Rama, who is the leader of the human beings. Now Tsaksakhan kidnaps Sita, who is the wife of King Rama, and he hopes she'll fall in love with him. So King Rama gets an army of monkeys to fight the demon king. And then in the end, Tsaksakhan is defeated, and King Rama takes Sita back to the capital city. So it says that the palace was built in 1782 when King Rama the first, uh, first took office. It's still used for some government offices, but it's mostly tourism now. So we've seen a lot of traditional Chinese guardian lions. These things are really cool. One of the things that people don't really notice of these, these lions, they're always presented in pairs, and there's a male and a female. And the female will have a cub underneath her paw, and that's to represent the cycle of life. And the male will have an embroidered ball under his paw, and that's to represent strength. So we just finished up the Grand Palace. Um, a couple takeaways. One, if you're going to come here, make sure that you wear uh, a shirt with sleeves and long pants so you don't have to spend 300 baht getting the good old elephant pant <laughs> and the elephant tee that I'm never going to wear ever again. Also, this is an XXL. Uh, I've never worn an XXL in my life. It still feels like a medium. It cost me 300 baht, about 10 bucks, so it's definitely a tourist trap kind of ripoff. This place is crazy. I mean, the attention to detail, whether it's the landscaping, whether it's just the, I mean, just the detail and all the stone. I mean, just the design and, and the, the appreciation that they take for their heritage. You can see in the way that people conduct themselves while here. Everybody's very respectful. Uh, there's something we can take away from this. It's very, it's very cool. It's a, it's a very unique and, and a once in a lifetime opportunity. So if you get a chance in Thailand, you definitely need to check out the Grand Palace. She went all chucky on it. Jesus. Thank you. I got nuts. So after we finished at the Grand Palace, we walked about a half a mile to this little pier where you would get on a ferry and it was for Bot to cross the river over to Wat Arun, also known as the Temple of the Dawn. It's been here since the 17th century and it has all of these spires which are called prangs and it's where the relics of Buddha that they have in Thailand are kept. It has this beautiful architecture with intricate details and a lot of the same kind of storyline that we've been seeing at the Grand Palace with the monkey army and different gods from the Buddhist religion. We are in a tuk-tuk on our way to Kosan Road. Uh, we just finished up Wataroon. We had an amazing time. I'm gonna get some lunch, then maybe head back over uh, to the hostel and relax, maybe get a massage. A good massage, not that kind of massage you guys are thinking. <laughs> yeah. It's not that kind of party. Whoa, no boom boom, boom here. Yeah. They say they say the sketchy massage places, they say boom boom. We know no. no boom boom. That's bad. No boom boom. Bad. Want a legit massage. The massage that we got yesterday was 
450 baht for an hour and they went to freaking work on my back which is so amazing because my back is torn up from years of wrestling it's good to be out of center city um being out at Kosan road definitely feels a lot more like the backpacker vibe that i was used to uh on my first trip when we were, where we were um in the city where we are staying in the city is it's pretty it's pretty rugged it's like it's very raw bangkok uh a lot of weird smells but I mean it's, it's part of it uh, it's good to experience but the prices tend to be higher there because you're near like their entertain or their mall district um, where they're building these giant high-rises that they're trying to sell for millions of dollars that I don't think anyone's gonna buy but um, definitely feel more at home here on this vibe this is Kosan Road one of the most famous roads in Bangkok um, I remember here, being here before, they were selling like whippets on the streets. It was absolutely insane. Um, at night, this place gets popping with street carts and street food and stuff like that. Um, but there's, there's pretty good restaurants around here.